Hey everybody, uh, Donna Schwartz here from DonnaSchwartzMusic.com, the website for practical solutions and tips for your music performance issues and such. Okay, I'm a little bit late, sorry about that, uh, but today what I wanted to talk about, since this is my last Facebook Live of the year, of 2016, um, this is the time of the year where everyone reflects. They look back, they look back on the year, and they also look ahead to the next year and they create goals and all that other kind of stuff. In fact, most people create resolutions. They do New Year's, res New Year's resolutions. I don't do that. I actually, um, I do create goals for the year, but I don't create resolutions. And let me explain why. In our society, it seems that with resolutions, resolutions are made to be broken. Okay, this is my opinion. People tend to say, I'm going to lose 15 pounds, you know, next year. And they make these resolutions, but they don't put a solid plan of action behind them, okay? So a resolution, it's almost like just a statement. Some people do hold true with their resolutions, which is awesome, but many folks just make the statement, and then they join a gym, and then, you know, two weeks down the road, it's too hard for them, they're not putting in the effort, and then they quit, okay? So I've noticed that. I noticed that with a lot of people, and I made it a point to myself to say, I don't make resolutions, but I do make goals, and I plan. So I wanted to focus this session more on mindset and on goal planning, um, because I'm also seeing like a lot of, or hearing a lot of conversations around um, people's mindset, how they're approaching things, and I really wanted to address that in this particular Facebook Live. So, um, if you're on live with me now, please share this, let's get the conversation going, get some thoughts out there, all that kind of stuff. Okay, so, first thing, resolutions. Instead of making resolutions, reflect back on your year and think about, there's my doorbell, I'm going to let that go, <laughs> think about, um, you know, all the things that you've accomplished this year. Write it down on a piece of paper. Yes, I'm being old school. Okay, don't type it out. Write it out on a piece of paper. Um, accomplishments, 2016. A lot of folks are going to say this was a really terrible year. A lot of um, strange stuff has happened, weird stuff. Forget about it. Write down all your accomplishments. Then, after you've done that, you should feel proud of what you've done. Then, the next column or the next part Write down all the things that you wanted to accomplish but didn't. Just write them down. Don't put any feeling into it because when you put feeling into it, you're gonna, you may feel bad or this or that, and it's going to make it that much harder. After you've done that, look at that list and then go over that list and see, is there anything there that's, you know, are those goals, were, there, were those goals so important that you really needed to achieve them? Or were they just stuff that you just put down? If it was stuff that you just put down, put it away. Just let it go. If it's stuff that you want to achieve, take those goals and think to yourself, take one of them, break it down. Let's say, uh, as a musician, let's say it's something like, I have performance anxiety and I want to get past that. Boy, that's a lofty goal, right? Okay, well, you can't just make that statement and not have something underneath that. So let's tackle performance anxiety. Okay, 2017, I want to deal with performance anxiety. Well, what are the steps to reach that goal? Well, how much am I performing in public right now? You've got to answer that question. What kind of music am I performing right now? What kind of music would I like to perform in public? Okay. How much am I practicing that music that I'd like to perform in public? How secure am I with that music that I would like to perform in public? What are the steps to help me get, get more secure with that music that I'd like to perform in public? You see, with performance anxiety, it's something that you can't, you know, you can't just dream up and say, boom, it's going to go away. You do have to practice performing in public in order for it to go away. So you have to, you have to be, you have to own the music that you're going to be playing in public, meaning that you've got to know it really, really well. If you're playing, you know, a jazz standard, you should, even if you're looking at a chart, you should feel really comfortable with the melody. You should understand the chord changes, you know, not just like read them and they're just like letters, okay? Really understand them. When you get more understanding into something, 
you own it more, you're able to express yourself more, and you're able to be more relaxed about doing it, okay? As an example, when I do these Facebook Lives, I like to make it based on a theme. And I like to think about, before I go live, what that theme is going to be. Do I script out what I'm saying? No. But, you know, if there's questions, I write down those questions, and I try to theme them together, and I try to piece it all into one. So, you know... Going with that big goal of performance anxiety, really break it down. Really analyze all the steps that you need to take in order to get that goal. And then with all those steps that you've outlined, you know, like uh, how often are you performing, you know, the style of music you're performing, what pieces, you know, what pieces are you comfortable with, um, how much are you practicing, take those and break them down even more so that you'll have a clear plan to achieve that goal. And when we're dealing with goals, not just resolutions, but goals for the new year, you don't want to have 12 goals to try to achieve. That's, that's too much. It's information overload. Pick, I would say, one or two. Because you just saw what I did with that one goal, and I didn't even totally go through that. With that one goal, really breaking it down into what makes up that goal, and then breaking that down into more steps, and then breaking it down into, okay, by this particular date, I want to achieve, I want to own playing the tune four. And what do I mean by that? Understanding the melody, being able to play it, not necessarily memorize it, but if you need to memorize it, awesome. Knowing the chord changes, understanding them, if you need to memorize them, so be it, that kind of thing. Okay, so, you know, in terms of the new year, this is another way of approaching how to set goals for the new year. Okay, mindset. So we just talked about goals, now we're going to get to mindset. By the way, if you're with me live, please share this. Let's get more folks on live. If you're not and you're watching the replay, please like and share it because we all like to be liked. And I think this information is going to help you as a musician, but it will also help if you're a teacher, your students. So please think about any music educators that you may know um, so that this will help them help their students. Because we all remember back in high school um, all those emotions that we were going through. And um, I think if more students were exposed to more talk about mindset and goal planning, I think it would help them a lot. Mindset. I'm hearing a lot of folks talking negative about themselves. Um, it's interesting, like someone would say, oh, you know, I can't get, I can't get this articulation thing, I just, I must suck. When you personalize something like that, like let's say you're having a problem with articulation, you're, you know, articulating too hard, or you're, or you're not articulating cleanly or clearly, and then you personalize it and you say, oh, well, I'm not doing this particular task right. I must suck. You're bringing an emotion to that that does not need to be brought into the picture. When you do that, that's going to make it that much harder to accomplish whatever goal you're trying to accomplish with that. It's going to make it that much harder to create a new positive habit. I was going to say break an old habit. I'd rather say create a new positive habit. So when you personalize something, something that's outside of you, just like articulation, and then you start to say, I suck at articulation, I'm not a good player, guess what? Every time you put up something on the stand where you have to go, <clears throat> where you've got to do really clear articulation, that was triple tonguing, you're not going to be able to do it because you just internalized, I suck at articulation, okay? So this is a little flip of the switch. There was that Ford quote, um, if you think you can or if you think you can't, you can. <laughs> All right. Whatever you're thinking really comes out. It really does. So if you want to continue to think negative thoughts, guess what's going to come out the bell of your horn or whatever you're playing? The negative stuff, the same stuff that you're thinking. So we want to change our mindset. We don't want to personalize or internalize if we're having a problem with something. Another example that's typical of, more typical of trumpet players, but also for saxophone players I'm finding too. I can't play those high notes for anything, or those altissimo notes. I, I just can't play them. I suck. No, you don't suck. It's just that maybe you have to look at the technique. Maybe you have to look at your embouchure setting. Maybe you have to look at you know, how you're 
you, how you're doing your breath support. You know, are you tense when you're breathing? Well, guess what? If you even make a fist or two fists right now, just make two fists and try to take in air. Blow it out. Now, just relax your body. Take in air. Blow it out. I hope you notice the difference. So if you're, if you're thinking that you have, uh, if you're internalizing that you have a problem with something and you attach an emotion to it and, and you say that I suck at it, you're building tension in your body. It makes it harder to breathe. It also makes it harder to certainly articulate. It makes it harder to do faster fingerings. Okay, any tension you bring in your body, it's just going to make it that much more difficult. And that tension is coming from up here. It's coming from attaching an emotion to something. So you've got to be really super careful with that. Mindset is half of your playing. Some people will disagree. That's fine. But if your mind is somewhere else where, first of all, if your mind is somewhere else, then you're, you're being distracted you're just, you know, you're just uh, blindly playing. <laughs> you're not really accomplishing anything, okay? You're just wasting time, honestly. But if your mind is in a negative spot, you're reinforcing that negative spot by attaching that emotion to the problem you may be having with something. Like if you've got a, a hard, passes, hard passage, something like that, if you've got a hard passage and you think, oh my gosh, this is hard, this is beyond me, here's the typical scenario that people do. They sit there, they may finger it once. Oh, let me just play it. They'll play it at speed, which is too fast for them. And then it'll reinforce that habit and that thought of, I can't play that, that's too hard. Instead, wouldn't it be better to take the emotion out of it, okay, say, I can do this, slow it down a lot, do the fingerings, do the air sounds, or really slow it down, do it a million times, fingerings and air sounds, and then play it slow, and then gradually bump up the metronome, you'll get it. Okay, so that's my little piece on, on mindset and on um, goal planning and stuff. Everything ties in. Everything ties in. And, and this doesn't just relate to music. It relates to life in general. And by the way, if you're watching this live, likes would be awesome. If you're watching the replay, likes are cool too. Comment. That would be awesome. Check out my website, donnaschwartzmusic.com. Right now, the freebie is uh, three tips to fatten up your tone. I just offered a course on uh, Get a Killer Saxophone Tone. So if you're interested in that and you want to be on the wait list for the next time that course is offered, I'm going to put the link below this as well. Um, so again, mindset, goal planning, practicing, performing, life in general, everything is related. It really is. Everything is tied in. Okay, before I go, I just want to um, bring up one more thing. Right now, um, I have a couple of articles out. I did an awesome interview with Tom Ridenour from the, he's the creator of the ATG Reed Finishing System. It's for clarinet and saxophone players, but it's also, it's also for music educators. So listen up, music educators. This is so important. This system will save so many reeds for your students. And it'll make them sound, it'll make the sections sound so much better in band. It's simple to use. Uh, when you get the system, you get the finishing surface, you get the tool, you get the, uh, the sandpaper that, that comes with that to help with the tool. But you also get DVD. You get a DVD on how to use it. He shows you all the five finishing techniques. And you get a little booklet that also goes through everything as well. Let me tell you, the information in that booklet and on the DVD really is priceless. It's going to change your, not change your thinking, but really just educate you in terms of reads and what to do when certain things don't work. So the ATG system, right now, up until January 15th, if you subscribe to my free weekly newsletter, you get a 15% discount. And what happens, you click the button, you want the discount, you're going to get the information to, um, to get that discount. But you can only get it, and I'll put the link below, um, if you sign up for my free weekly newsletter. So I wanted to put that out there. It is worth it. And take advantage of this 15% discount because, you know, it's probably not going to happen again for probably another year. And it's really, really well worth it. All right, guys, so this is my shortened, hey, Simon, how you doing? Um, so this is my shortened session for today. As a recap, you know, I don't do resolutions. I do 
create goals and I look at each goal and I break it down into how to approach it and what I can do to achieve that goal. I don't just put out a blanket statement and say, okay, I'm going to be able to play rhythm check, the rhythm changes at, you know, quarter or equals 200. No, I've got to be able to be really specific and break down that goal and break it down even further and further. And I create maybe two or three goals for the year based on that. And then I also talked about mindset and how, you know, if you internalize, if you personalize something, it's going to make it that much harder to create a new positive habit because you've attached an emotion to something, you know, like I can't articulate. Then you become that person that can't articulate. So we talked about that a little bit. Um, and the last thing, too, just a reminder about that ATG, Read Finishing System Discount. So definitely check that out. I'll put the link to the latest part of the interview with Tom below and check out the, uh, uh, you know, that part of the interview, the article. Click on the link, sign up for my newsletter. So this way you get the 15% discount. Okay, guys, on that note, thanks for joining me. And I'll see you probably next week. Next week will be 2017. So have a safe, happy, and healthy new year. Take care. Have a great day.